Today we've got a, uh, another implantable medical device, courtesy of eBay. Uh, this is an Interlith RP rote programmable CMOS model 251. I think this is a fairly simple pacemaker rather than the defib that we saw last time. Fairly clean, so either this hasn't been implanted or it's been sort of thoroughly cleaned or possibly on it could even be a demonstration model or something, I don't know, although I would have thought if it was a demo unit it would actually have a big label saying, you know, this thing doesn't work, please don't implant it. And the main enclosure is a metal, I'm guessing probably titanium, and it appears to it's probably been welded and it's also got this clear sort of resin part on the top of the, looks like quite a complicated connector, there's a sort of screw here comes out oh, and there's a, an Allen key in here things seem to want to come out this single cable which got a sort of silicone sleeve and the actual inner wire is sort of sprung sort of springy uh, let me see it again presumably that's probably titanium right, so I think we can need to uh, use some brute force to get into this thing Well, as you expect, quite a lot of this is battery. There's some uh, lump of electronics on the top. Some more metal that needs taking off. This is a uh, lithium iodine cell. In my catalyst research in Baltimore. Let's see if it's got any life left in it. 2.7 volts. And short circuit current of pretty much nothing, so I think that's completely dead. An interesting package of the uh, electronics. This is obviously a, an NFC type coil for communication to um, set it up and adjust it. Some fairly sort of old school sort of through hole stuff and some uh, sort of hermetically sealed cans. Sort of fairly sort of reminiscent of sort of 70s, 80s military stuff. I'm not really sure what the date is of this. I couldn't immediately find any info online, so it's probably uh, moderately old. We've got some uh, surface mount packages and say these are sort of very reminiscent of uh, old military type stuff. There's a few on the other side as well, but quite a lot of through hole parts. And two, um, I think those are standard FR4 PCBs just stuck together. There's only, looks like, looks like there's only four interconnections between the uh, boards, unless there's a connector further down. Yeah, just four connections. All right, these look like date codes here, 79. And 79 on that one. And 77 here. Right, so let's see what's inside this can. And as you probably expect, a um, uh, rather pretty uh, hybrid module with quite a lot of chips on it. 
So there's quite a few bits in here. There's uh, a few ICs, a few discrete semiconductors, and a few passives on this ceramic substrate. Looks like there's some resistive elements as well in the ceramic, or possibly inductive, like that. But, uh, these down here. I'll stick this under a microscope in a minute to get a close look at the chips, if we can see anything on them. And on this top board, um, there's a reed switch on here, which so presumably you can use a magnet to maybe activate the RFID stuff. These ceramic things are usually quite easy to uh, open up. It's an old grotty pair of cutters that uh, you know, don't do this with good quality cutters. This is a pair that's seen better days, but still got fairly sharp edges. Yep. It's a fairly small single die in there. I mean, these could even be sort of military spec versions of, you know, bog standard sort of 4000 CMOS or something uh, fairly simple like that. Obviously, being 70s, these aren't particularly uh, high levels of integration. You can almost see the circuit features at this, uh, so we should be able to see a bit more detail under the uh, microscope. Right, let's look at these um, gold chips. You can see the sort of very, very large feature sizes. In fact, this, this, this one's got sort of quite a lot of symmetry. In fact, if we look down here, you just make out 4R11B. So I think that is actually a 4R11 4000 series CMOS chip. There's this sort of three cube logo on uh, most of the chips. I don't know if anyone recognises that from the, uh, the late 70s. But as you can see, it's very, very uh, large feature size as you expect from uh, well obviously the, the date code is late 70s but obviously it's pretty designed a few years before that so this is pretty early uh, early chip tech and this is the uh, larger of the gold chips you can see there's quite quite a lot more um, stuff in there a bit less regular you can just about make out there a 4029B which is a uh, which is a preset of a up down counter, so um I suppose it's plausible that might be being used as some sort of um sort of programmable frequency uh divider. The other case did say rate programmable, so um maybe that's how they adjust the uh the rates. I'm assuming this just outputs like a fairly simple pulse to sort of for the heart to uh, synchronise to. And there's one other chip <coughs> another of these large chips again looks moderately complex compared to the others it's still you know trivially simple compared to today's chips you can almost count the number of features on it not sure if those plus signs maybe indicate the number of um, layers perhaps the M show indicates metal and there is a number here 4282 on this chip you can actually see these markings looks like sort of that one at the bottom is on the sort of surface and the ones higher up look slightly recessed so I think that may actually be indications of each layer of the um, fabrication process well, let's take a look at some of the parts on that hybrid module now this looks like a um, resistive elements and if we look down here we can actually see this This looks like it's been laser trimmed you see this horizontal burn mark and in fact just above it we can actually see what looks like some some other trim operation so this is a sort of laser trimmable resistor and next to it we've got what looks like a fairly simple chip sort of very few features on it I don't see any obvious markings on that one. I 
And here we've got another one of these later trim was resistors and again we can see these uh, little trim points at the bottom where it's been adjusted. Part number there but no obvious maker's name. And over here it looks like we've got another 411 die. Similar features. And another device over here marked uh, 4258. Again, very large features. Again, we've got this uh, three cube uh, logo. And what looks like six layer marks. Now over here we've got a much bigger part that also looks like it's been laser trimmed. So this is probably a fairly low value resistor. It looks like it's been trimmed from that end. It's one really small device, I'm guessing that's probably a diode. And another very small two terminal device, so I presume a diode or a transistor. And one more, so again very simple two or three terminal device, which again, that may, I mean that, that channel looks fairly wobbly, so maybe that's been laser trimmed as well. I found a little bit of information on the net on this uh, battery. One advantage apparently of lithium iodine cells, it's a solid electrolyte that doesn't outgas under fault conditions, so it's hermetically sealed. There's no risk of it sort of exploding or anything nasty. This cell's got a capacity of 2.3 amp hours at a nominal 2.8 volts, no load. Um, of course what I should have done is actually tried powering it up before I pulled all the uh, chips apart and uh, done some measurements. I'd imagine you could probably detect the output waveforms quite easily, so um, I'll keep an eye out for stuff like this and uh, next time I'll give it a bit more thought and actually try firing it up. As I say, it looks like it's a very simple device, functionally sort of based around Standard logic, obviously not a processor in sight in uh, the late 70s. And they probably used some uh, interesting waveforms to um, generate the programming um, waveforms. I don't know whether this was designed to be programmed in the body or externally before it was implanted, so um, maybe if anyone knows they could uh, add some info in the comments. Um, I've actually had an offer of a modern pacemaker from someone but unfortunately we're going to have to wait about a year and a half before it actually uh, comes out of him to have a look at so uh, hopefully we uh, might see something interesting. But these things do come um, up here at your eBay so anything, any ones that go cheap I'll uh, take a look at and obviously if anyone's got any uh, lying around um, please get in touch.